Where did I put that wrench? There it is. I picked this little guy up at a flea market for a dollar. This thing is not what you would call the epitome of high quality manufacturing excellence. A section of the adjusting nut is missing. I carefully unbent the metal tabs holding the pin. I was able to sneak in the top side and drive out the pin. Here's the wrench disassembled. The bottom jaw looks like it is one piece of thin metal folded up and riveted together. I soaked the pieces in evaporust overnight. The evaporust removed the corrosion and the black oxide finish. I peened the mushroomed jaws back into shape and filed them square. The jaws look much improved. I had my buddy put some weld on the adjusting nut. I used my Dremel and a cutoff wheel to try to rough out the shape of the threads. And then I finished up with some hand filing. Here's the little wrench reassembled. Getting the pin tabs bent just right was a pain in the butt. To keep the pin from falling out, I used a punch to deform the bottom end. She works pretty smooth. The repaired adjusting nut is what I would call good from far. I wanted to try some metal jeweling on this project. I researched a few low budget DIY techniques. I figured I better test them out before using them on a project. I sanded and polished a steel flat to use as my test piece. I felt like the nicer the metal surface, the better the jeweling effect would look. The first technique I tried was pencil erasers and toothpaste. I cut the pencil down so it would fit in my drill press. I tried to apply a consistent pressure and duration for each jewel mark. The trick is to overlap each mark and stagger the rows. Unfortunately, the eraser and toothpaste technique was not abrasive enough for the steel plate. I tried it on a piece of aluminum and got a much better effect. I also had success with this technique on my Stanley 199 challenge project. The next technique I tested was a wire brush. This is a Harbor Freight brush you would use in your Dremel. I pushed some heat shrink tubing down over the bristles to make the brush into a stiff column. This is supposed to concentrate the bristles to give a consistent jeweling pattern. I found the heat shrink tubing wasn't strong enough to keep the bristles together, so I added a tiny zip tie. This worked better, but I was not able to get a consistent jeweling pattern. The third technique I tried was gluing Scotch-Brite to a dowel stick. I used a 3 8 inch dowel and JB Quick Epoxy. This technique has the advantage of variability. You can use just about any diameter dowel and you can vary the grades of the Scotch-Brite. Out of the three techniques I tried, the Scotch-Brite dowel technique achieved the best jeweling effect on the steel plate. So I went ahead and used the Scotch-Brite dowel technique on the lower jaw of my tiny wrench. Here she is, jeweled and painted. I mixed testers green and silver with a touch of black. After all that work, she's still probably only worth a dollar. But hey, it was a fun project, and it gave me an excuse to try out some jeweling techniques. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I thought I would share another one of my wife's crochet projects. I figured a tiny elephant would be a good bonus clip at the end of a tiny wrench video.